episode number four, Center for Native American Youth at the Aspen Institute. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to have these uh, beautiful uh, guests joining me today. Uh, I'm Chance Rush, I'm your moderator. Um, I want to, you know, obviously, uh, Center for Native American Youth, uh, our Telenative, um, in efforts during this pandemic with COVID-19, uh, a lot of our young people have been discombobulated and some aren't doing the things that they wanted to do and plans that they've made all have been canceled or delayed, whatever it may be. So Center for Native American Youth wanted to do our Telenative, uh, our first session, was uh, on mental health. Our past two sessions were on um, on uh, medicine. I mean, movement is medicine. And today we are just so delighted for our panel today. Uh, so with that being said, good afternoon and happy Pride Month this month. And, and always we celebrate the meaningful contribution, oops, the meaningful uh, contributions of our LGBTQ and two-spirit relatives. It was 50 years ago in New York City where the first Pride Parade was held today. And as every single day, we celebrate many contributions of our relatives. For some, for some uh, ground settings, I want to share that uh, prior to colonization, culturally, LGBTQ and two-spirit rel relatives uh, were held at high, with high regard. Creator chose these relatives um to uh to you know as individuals for guidance for a spiritual connection um members of the community were all well aware of the sacred identity and often looked to these relatives for spiritual and cultural guidance uh, that being said i am so honored to share this space with tyson uh soma nate and sharente welcome to the center for native american youth telenative youth webinar and at this time i would like everyone to introduce themselves, starting with uh, Tyson, and then we'll go down the list. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, my name is Tyson Johnston. I'm the vice president at the Quinault Indian Nation. We're on the northwest coast of Washington State. Um, I've had the honor to serve in this role this past six years, and I've served in leadership for the past 10. Um, this is really exciting um, that we're deciding to take up space and acknowledge all the contributions indigenous folks make to not only the LGBT community, but also our critical role in Indian country. But I'm so thankful to be here and I'm excited to be here with my panelists and friends. Go ahead, Sharente. Askwi kwa sanamas ni tampawag na tasui Sharente Mishitashin Harris. Hi, my friends. My name is Sharente. And I am Narragansett Niantic. Uh, I live in Charlestown, Rhode Island. I'm a 20 years old um, and I am two spirit. All right, going down the list. Go ahead, Nate. Yad eh Nate Yep Lemiolin Shle Tota Chini Nishle Kithla Chini A Bashishin Hashkad Zoa A Deshache. Tat Chitney A. Deshanella. Hello, my name is Nate Lemuel. I am of the Bitterwater clan. I am born of the Red House People clan. Yucca, fruit strung out in a line clan are my maternal grandfathers. Red running, red running into the Water People clan are my paternal grandmothers. Um, I am from Shiprock, New Mexico, where I grew up. I am a visual enthusiast and a photographer. I've been doing my art for about 10 years and um, right now I am just I'm here um, in New Mexico and it's great to be here. All right thank you Nate and uh, Soma go ahead. Um, my name is Soma coming at you from occupied Tiwa territory. Um, I'm the daughter of Deborah Holland, the granddaughter of Mary Toya. We are Turquoise clan um, and we are from Laguna Pueblo here in New Mexico. I'm also part Hamas. Um, and yeah, I'm just just a queer, indigenous queer here to serve knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so grateful that you guys are all here and uh, with us and 
you know, um, w without holding up any of the time that you guys have, I do want to say quickly how proud of each one of you, you, you are as, as just young, bright activists, young, bright individuals, and, you know, you and all your professions, what you guys got going on. It, it truly is an honor to, to see the journey, you know, in, in each one of you just uh, over the years. So I'm really grateful for that. And I want to thank the Center for Native American Youth and the Aspen Institute for giving me the opportunity to, to serve as a moderator, uh, Chance Rush, Hadatsa, Dakota, Arapaho, uh, make my home in beautiful Tulsa, Oklahoma with my wife, uh, uh, Tyler English Rush, and uh, just being a dad and, you know, playing my part and, and, and making a difference. And, you know, I know that there's so much going on in the world today, um, a lot of setbacks, uh, a lot of, uh, frustrations, but there's a lot, or there's also a lot of promise. And, and I want you guys to keep being on the front line and continue to make a difference. Um, first question I have today is for, uh, for our, uh, one, our panelist, uh, Tyson. Um, again, just so proud of you, uh, Tyson. I remember you, when I first came up to, uh, to Hola, came up to Quinault and you came to our youth conference and, you know, now to see, you know, the person you are today, I, I, I really am grateful and thankful to, to know you, Tyson. And, you know, um, you know, I know that your family uh, always has my back every time I come up there. So I want to get this thing started. Can you share your journey into tribal leadership and how your identity has supported this journey? Of course. Um, I think a lot about um, where I'm at and how I got to the position I'm in today. And I think, um, you know, everyone that's participating in this work on this panel right now and those that are listening in, we're really, you know, those coming generations that have been foretold and, you know, talked about. And a lot of us are um, the beneficiaries and stand on the backs of giants and people that have sacrificed and, you know, made huge uh, moves within Indian country coming out of colonization and uh, allowing us to continue to thrive again and rebuild our nations. And so, I've had the honor of, you know, um, having my tribal leadership invest in me, you know, making sure that, you know, we're attending youth conferences, we're being exposed to colleges and universities, and we're also, you know, making sure that we're getting ready to sustain ourselves by passing the mic to new tribal leadership. We've always been really good about that here. Um, the nation that I come from is really matrilineal um, in, in nature, and so, I grew up with looking up to many, you know, just amazing, you know, women in my life and in my family that served in uh, leadership before I did. And so it's really their teachings and their guidance and the work that they did um, that really inspired me to continue that uh, in my family and for my community. You know, there's a lot of things that we need to do still to continue to become more whole and work on that ability to thrive again, you know, as uh, tribal nations kind of rise up and come into their power. And so um, for me, um, as I uh, kind of look at the fingerprint that I want to leave behind on the work that I've done is really making sure that, you know, our trans and LGB and two-spirited folks are really at the forefront and included um, into everything that tribes are doing, you know. Our inclusion and acceptance is an essential component of tribal sovereignty. Um, we look at tribal sovereignty through a limited lens, but um, until all of our people are at the table and, you know, we are welcoming people back in um, versus pushing them out, um, you know, we're never going to be a whole community or a whole as Indian country. And so that's what I really feel like, you know, I'm doing. And I've had the honor of really crossing paths with many of our queer and two-spirited folks that are coming into leadership, you know, all over, you know, this uh, country and beyond. And so I think a lot of that is just a natural uh, returning to our roles. You know, we were always uh, in roles of leadership. We were always ambassadors. We were always wisdom keepers. Um, we carried a lot of that. And so I'm trying to manifest that as best as I can and honor my journey and also just, you know, honor my family and the blood that I carry within me. Um, if you could be that one person that, you know, you yearn for when you were young, you should do that. And if you're making that world just a little bit easier for someone that's like you or similar to you or struggling, um, you know, we're, we're going to be better for it. We kind of lose we can't afford to lose even one of us. You know, all of us are special and precious. And so I try to think about that and think about the chairs that should be filled at my meetings or the spaces that I'm in and try to carry those folks that have been taken from us too soon with me all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're, you're so right on the money, you know, in, in whatever topic it's about, it doesn't matter. 
you know, uh, fighting addictions, um, mental health, fitness, you know, the, the, the past two panels that we talked about, you know, we have to come together no matter what, you know, and, and, and you are absolutely right. You know, so thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I'll, I'll come back to you here in a moment. Um, uh, Soma, in your journey and uh, leaning into your identity, who's been your biggest supporter and um, share a story about this supporter? Okay. Um, I have been incredibly blessed that I actually have a lot of supporters in my life. Um, I never take for granted how privileged I am to have always had space to be myself growing up. Um, my parents have always been very supportive of me and always accepted me for exactly um, who I was, even you know, the like weird middle school phase that we won't talk about. Um, but my, probably one of my biggest supporters that I would name would be my, my good friend, Rhiannon. We went to college together. Um, I also went to school for theater. So I was surrounded by <laughs> some eccentric folks all the time. But um, I think that this friend in particular um, gives me space to like, I think that it's so important um, as queer people and as people in general that we're given the space and option to like change our mind. <laughs> um, I know at least me personally, like I heavily, when I was 18, I like heavily identified as a lesbian and that label was like super important to me. But the older I get, the more I'm discovering myself, the more my labels are becoming more fluid and changing. And um I just remember every time I feel like I need to get something off my chest, that's the person I, I reach out to. Um, we also work with children together and Rhiannon has very much supported me in like being myself around kids, which can be scary sometimes, but um, having coworkers and people in your space that you know have your back is, is really awesome. So um, I really appreciate them and their, um, ability to hold space for me and empower me to um, live in my identity truthfully, even if it's changing from day to day. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool, man. I hope we get to meet uh, Brandon one day. That'd be kind of cool, you know. Um, well, thank you for your words. Thank you for sharing that. We'll come back to you here in a moment. And, you know, we're just really uh, uh, proud of you, proud of your mom and what you found, what your family do, you know, do, does for for uh, all of us, you know, and uh, very, very grateful and thankful. I remember uh, I used to run uh, with some buddies up in Laguna and, uh, you know, your mom, your parents name came up often, you know, and it's just, it's just so powerful how, you know, they said that this world is small, you know, but it, they say Indian country is small, but it's like when you want to do great things, Indian country is even smaller, you know, because you come around, you come through a lot of the really bright and great people. Saying that, you know, speaking of uh, Indian country is, is small. Uh, I remember I did a camp uh, a few months ago and uh, I, had a, I had the privilege of having a Sharente at the camp. Uh, siblings were both there as well. How you doing, uh, Sharente? Doing great. Man, isn't that, isn't this, how did I do it? How did I do it? How was my training? Was I boring? No, it was incredible. I mean, I think it was such an incredible opportunity for our tribal youth to get together. And I mean, the work that you did really, I think, strengthened our bonds as a community, as youth. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's so important in this day and age for time immemorial, our youth um, have moved us forward, have been uh the ones that shake things up because they're born into a world that they did not create and so i really think um that time gave us the motivation and inspiration to uh realize how tangible our own fates are in the world around us and the power we have as a collective to yeah. awaken and change Wow, you know, and it was so funny because when I got there and I was talking to Quana, it's like you—you you were the one that was famous, you know. And 
they were talking about Vogue and they were talking about either you're about to do Vogue or you just did it, did the team Vogue. And, uh, and, and I was just like, man, really? Uh, Sharente? Wow. You know, and, and this, and the reason why I say that is because you, you really stood out, you know, you really stood up and you stood out for, you know, just, uh, I was, you know, being there, being influential at this training. Um, and saying that, I remember uh, that, you know, you quoted in, in Vogue at one time, it said, um, uh, within my life as indigenous, two-spirited youth, the most controversial act I ever committed was being myself. Can you uh, elaborate on that? And also, on top of that, kind of share, about, share with us why it's important to be yourself. Absolutely. Um, I'm reminded right here, Soma's words really rang true. I'm with my Nakomis, my grandmother right now. And um, as matriarchal people, our grandmothers are such big parts of our life. And I have been blessed that I have two strong Narragansett grandmothers, um, one of which uh, passed on last summer. Um, but during my time coming out, um, it is a blessing to immediately be affirmed for who you are. And so the fact that my grandmother was able to tell me, you're two spirit, when I came out, um, was incredible because I, I feel uh, a lot of young people um, don't have that kind of, they might have support from their families, but that inherent understanding. Um, and we are living in an increasingly colonial world. Um, mm -hmm. So right now I'm at Brown and RISD as a dual degree student. Um, and I'm in my third year and most of my work, whether it's my writing or my artwork has um, been centered towards decolonization. Um, our people have been taught not to listen to the own sound of our hearts beating. We have been taught not to recognize what is so inherent to ourselves. Um, and we must awaken from that. And it's our two spirit people that do okay. just oh, yeah. that. We, we exist in this in-between place. Um, and many people that are not indigenous will get confused and won't understand how when I came out as gay, my grandmother told me I was two spirit because doesn't two spirit mean you are connected to both being a man and a woman? So isn't that more like transgender? But inherently, the, conceptually, being two-spirit blurs all of those lines and it doesn't matter what you are. You are two-spirit, you're sacred, you exist in that in-between place. Um, so going out into my tribal community, um, and having to face, unfortunately, uh, the product of 300 plus years of colonization and forced assimilation, um, there was a lot of awakening that needed to happen. And it all really began with dance. Um, so my dance journey um, as a fancy shawl dancer really shook people and when i started out i felt invisible and naked and as if i didn't have a community of support but as i continued and persevered eventually there were protests that happened where people realized that me being kicked out of the circle was wrong and my own peers that i was dancing with in the circle my sisters, they supported me wholeheartedly. And it was really um, a select few um, who were caught within 
the sadness of our history of oppression that tried to hold us back. As indigenous people, we have continually evolved and grown as the world around us has changed and that is how we have stayed alive. Um, and uh, I think it really comes down to just reminding people of who we are um, because many, many indigenous people will say, oh, well, our people weren't, didn't have two spirits. That's just something out West. Well, no, that's not true. I mean, we know from our oral histories, that's not true. But even if you look at primary source documents, if you look at Baron de la Hontan, he talks about what he calls the hermaphrodites. And he talks about the hunting women who don't take husbands and how these people were accepted. These East Coast tribal people, that two spirits were respected within their communities and were supported. Um, and I have peace in my heart that um, I know who I am and I know how to refer to myself in my language, Noah Ashba, he who is effeminate. Um, so I think as we move forward, this time during the coronavirus has um, really allowed people to, to go into their deepest parts. And time in many ways has kind of stopped and we've been brought back to a, a sort of dream time. Um, and during this sacred time, we must remember that amidst all of our differences, that we are all interconnected. And what a beautiful thing that is, the great spectrum of difference that we create. And it's not shall we, the in-between, that is that holy place where we walk. Right, right, good, man, good insight. Awesome grandmas, you know. I thought I met one of them up there, I think. I thought, um, well, thank you for those words. Hey, Nate, going on over to you, uh, HBO, wow, what a huge platform. Congratulations on that. Um, I have not got to see the, uh, the, the series of We're, we're Here. Uh, I want to know what that is about and how, how does it make you feel to be able to uh, provide positive and accurate indigenous LGBTQ and two-spirited uh, representation on that huge platform. Nate? Well, first of all, I want to apologize. At first, I didn't um, tell everyone who I identify as. I identify as a queer um, gay man. Um, we're here. Uh, how that happened? Well, I, I, was, I was involved deeply in the indigenous music scene here on the Navajo Nation, and I went to the indigenous punk shows and the electronic experimental and I got so inspired that I used mu music as a as really a medium to create what I call visual enthusiasm visual enthusiasm which is just mixed media from photos to video to slideshows and it started to grow and I got recognized through the producers on Instagram and they approached me uh on there and i did a skype call a few times back and forth and um getting filled in on what we're here is it's basically a it's 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 a six-part unscripted series um and in each episode um there's three drag queens uh eureka o'hara uh shangela laquifa wadley and um bob the drag queen who is my drag mother uh they come into um, small towns across America. And uh, these towns are surrounded by so much already for any, from homophobia to transphobia to just racism. And uh, they picked Farmington. And I, the thing about it was I, I'm not from Farmington. I mean, I, I, I go there to, to get stuff, but like, Farmington is right next to Shiprock, which is border town um, from the reservation here on, on the Navajo Nation. And um, 
you know, I, I thought it would, it would be interesting to include not just myself, but I pushed to include um, my friends who are Lady Shook, uh, who identifies as non-binary, who's um, been in the drag scene for so many years, and my best friend Darren Tom, uh, who is a, a, a designer who um, is, is from Gallup. And we got together and we spoke and, you know, the show, what we wanted from the show was how, how can we represent ourselves and how can, you know, how can we, how can we make this in a way to represent ourselves, to support and to, 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 to use this platform to um, have other people understand who we are as the indigenous LGBTQ to spirits. And um, I, I, I told my story on there and there was so much that I wanted to tell about how I grew up um, being in the closet, uh, growing up in a, a Christian home. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's, it was really hard growing up and I wanted to let other people in my community as well as in my, you know, out there that it can be very hard, but I, I, I felt like there are so many sides to myself that I wanted to express as, as an individual as to what I identified with. And I've always had I always felt like I was androgynous when I was growing up. I, 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 I've, um, I've always played, I have always been that nice, a nice person growing up. And it was, it's hard for me to explain myself when, you know, you have the football team, you know, picking on you and, or you have a group of small friends picking on you. So I grew up trying to be nice to everybody and moving on from that, that point of, you know, being in school, I wanted to figure out how I can help my community, even though at one point I feel like, you know, there, there needed to be some form of acceptance and with what I'm not dealing with, but with some of my friends who, you know, were trying to create a better space in our community. Um, so expressing myself in that way through the show, I, I, uh, I wanted to to uh, create a performance and kind of talk about my life, how it was affected uh, a few years ago when I got into an accident. And I felt like I, wa I wanted, I felt when I got into an accident, I couldn't move. And I was considered at one point, not, not you know, half of, half of my body wasn't able to move. And, um, I picked up a camera. I've, I've always been a film photographer at, at a young age. My dad always had these cameras and he always, um, he always told me to take as many pictures as you want. And I did. And I, I, you know, technology was growing and I saw that and I, I started photographing. And as I woke up every day on that bed recovering from the hospital, I, would, I, I got a gift from my sister who um, brought me a camera and as much as I, I used to shake then, I don't as much now do, from my nerve damage, but I've always felt a connection taking pictures and rehabilitation um, physically. And that helped me so much. And at that point when I was recovering, people were saying, don't go out. You know, it took me a, almost a year to fully recover, to walk, to run. And the, 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 the people that were most accepting were the, the LGBTQ people that were providing space in the local music shows. And that's how I kind of got involved in photography more. And I wanted to express that through my legacy of being a photographer when I put that into my performance as Frankenstein's wife, coming back from, coming back from a darker place and bringing light from dark listed photography which is a figure of speech a place I was in from the dark into the light from a vanishing point into perspective M myself who I identify as and representing everyone that has supported me I wanted to make the I wanted 
Lady Shook to be by my side and Darren and they were. And um, the performance was to be innovative by having a, a cape or a, or a dress over me and um, representing the, my indigenous folks and um, black folks and um, POC. And uh, it, it, it was stood out very, I, I wasn't able to watch the show until it finally aired. And um, when I did, I, 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 the support that came in from so many different folks, it was, it's, it's, I'm still, I'm, it's still coming in and I'm, I'm there as much as I can be. And Bob the drag queen is the best drag mother I've ever had. And um, Suge and Darren, they, we, we're just there to support each other. We have been um, since then. And I'm really thankful and grateful for the opportunity that HBO has given us. Oh, did he disappear? I don't think he's here anymore. Oh no. I think he'll be back on again. <laughs> oh, okay. Say something, Chance. Okay, I'm sorry about that, gosh dang it. <laughs> sorry, apologize about that. Thank you for those words, you know, uh, one thing that, that you said is, you know, being, people being picked on and being bullied um, because of uh, who they are, you know? And that's one reason why I'm so grateful to be on this panel. You know, think of so many of our relatives who, you know, um, go through what they go through, you know? And uh, we're, we are told to love each other because we are all our relatives. We all are related. Thank you for that, Nate. Um, Tyson, um, kind of come back over here. I, I, I know you as Vice Chair Johnson, but I also just know you as Tyson. And, and it's just, to me, you're still that high school kid. Um, you have a huge presence in your community as a tribal leader. Where do you find, through, through all of this, I mean, you've got to balance family and the, the tribe and you know your, 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 your outreach, you know, where do you find your strength, your healing and your self-care? You know, um, that's a really awesome question. And I think it's something that um, all of us are gonna be probably perfecting for the rest of our lives. Um, uh, but the key word that I'm honing in on is balance um, and everything we do, you know, as um, uh, native people and especially two-spirit people you know, we represent, you know, that balance uh, as the people in between um, the people that view and see things that no one else can, you know, like we're given those gifts for that purpose. And I have always viewed us and in, um, in that realm of balance as being really important to what our role and responsibility is. And <clears throat> being a two-spirited person um, from my teachings, I think it's really important to point out that that word and identity, it transcends the limits of sexuality and gender, um, you know, as the Western folks, you know, kind of understand it. Though it does encompass those two things, um, I always view it as a spiritual obligation and a sacred role that you're committing to take on for your community, your nation, and ultimately the world. You know, it's a, it's a responsibility and a obligation as much as it is an identity. Um, so I get, um, you know, really, um, with our allies and other folks that try to co-opt that term, it becomes really problematic because unless you, you're tied to that and understand that sacred role and responsibility, um, I hate to see that word co-opted, you know, it's for indigenous folks uh, for a reason. And so, and it's because of that, you know, spiritual component and obligation that all of us are taking up when we, you know, use that identity. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I think where I find strength, especially, um, is really when I get to do things like this, um, when I get to see, you know, all the great things and beautiful people um, that are thriving, you know, despite, you know, colonization and the attempted erasure by the empire, you know, um, I'm blessed to have the opportunity and a platform to take up spaces. Um, and all of us have been doing that. People like me have been doing that since time immemorial. So I get to kind of help us come back to that. And all of our folks that are taking on that responsibility are doing that too. And so I find a lot of power and pride in that. And um, it's something that I try to carry with me when I feel my fire um, dimming a little bit. Um, I said it earlier, but uh, you know, in many of our communities, you know, um, two-spirit folks, uh, gender non-conforming folks, um, 
people that didn't really live in that binary as we know it, you know, were important people. You know, they were ambassadors, they were spokespeople, mm -hmm. they were healers and more, you know, they they dealt with things that, you know, no one else could dealt with um, because that was, you know, their gifts that they were given. And instead of shunning that and excluding that, you know, our communities held it up. We cultivated those gifts. And so um, we're coming back to that um, because of things like the, what the Center of Native American Youth and, you know, other organizations. And I have so much respect for artists too. A lot of you that are all participating in this are artists and creatives. And I just yeah. think that's really powerful because I view our creatives and artists as the ones that are visioning the future. And so you all that have that gift are visioning the world that we haven't arrived at yet. And so I'm really thankful for those that do that and are doing that work, whether it's through fashion, art, paint, music, whatever, it's just, uh, it's amazing. And so I really wanna recognize um, those that are creators and those that are creatives in our community. Um, <clears throat> I think dedicating a lot of my life um, to this work um, also, you know, just acknowledge it hasn't always been easy. You know, I have I have faced homophobia. I have faced bullying. Um, I've been told in many circles I'm not welcome there. And mm -hmm. I've refused to accept that, you know, because I have a rightful place at the table. And, right. you know, no one gets to decide that. And so I think that's why I've kind of been really um, leaning towards tribal leadership because, you know, if, you know, laws and policies and, uh, you know, social contracts, all of that are excluding us, then we have to rise up and find that strength to change those things and that's what i you know absolutely love doing you know um, making sure that our tribes you know have uh, non-discrimination statements um, that our laws and policies you know protect all our people and don't exclude some of our people and you know that's so important if we want our nations you know to thrive and become whole again you know i really think um, a lot of us are here because uh, you know we're meant to help our communities and indian country become whole you know many things were taken from us and there's this narrative out there that makes us focus on that you know that yeah. just existing and what's been stolen and what's been lost when really we get to change that narrative and kind of move forward and uh, you know create a world envision a world where we thrive again and we're right. you know, healthy and whole again and um, all of that and so I get inspiration you know just from that um, I also have a lot of beautiful nieces and nephews and young young people that you know I just I keep around me too, you know, like keeping family close and having that unconditional love and support um, is something that will always, you know, be my true strength beneath it all and my foundation. Um, I'm really blessed to have that acceptance from my community and my family for the most part. And mm -hmm. I've never um, been able to uh, have otherwise as far as I can remember. So I know that's a, a blessing that and a privilege that I don't take for granted. Yeah. Um, the other thing too, you know, taking time for healing and self-care, um, we're always urged, and you know this chance and everyone on here, um, you were, we're always encouraged to take on so much and, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we are amazing. We are divine. We are powerful. Maybe we can take on everything, but it's also okay to set boundaries and to recognize your limits too, because yeah. you should be investing in yourself. You should be taking that time to honor yourself and cultivate yourself too. Um, in the ways that you need to, you know, for me, it's, it's simple things like taking the time to enjoy my land and be next to my waters and my ocean. It's uh, having self care, like when my haircut is shaggy and my nails don't look good, you know, that's a sign I need to take care of myself. I need to do better to myself. You know, I deserve that. And uh, there's so many of our, our leaders and elders in our community that die so young because they choose not to do that. And we really need to be the cycle that, you know, breaks those bad habits and breaks those cycles that many of our folks are in. And part of that is having the audacity to care about yourself and love yourself and honor yourself by taking time to find balance and your center again. Um, <clears throat> I think the other thing that I, I wanna mention too while I have the time is we, I also feel as indigenous people have an obligation, you know, to all of our other communities that are struggling and so I find strength in, you know, seeing what other marginalized folks are doing, other people of color, and really, you know, understanding, you know, what they're working on and their movements are. Because I really believe that our liberation and everything that we're working on is bound to others. And until there's equality, you know, for our folks that are struggling in the black community right now um, due to police violence, um, our oceanic people, you know, are seeing their islands being swallowed because of climate change. You know, all those things are connected. And I think um, 
we need to also, you know, as indigenous people, lend our voice and energy and political power and spiritual power to all of our folks that are also in that position as well. And so I um, always find inspiration and teachings um, from other communities and I try to bring that into my own work. And I think when we do that too, when we work, um, you know, not just uh, in Indian country only, uh, there's a just a never ending source of inspiration and power there. And so I uh, am so blessed to have many teachers and uh, community that I share space with, um, not only here in Quinault, but all over the Pacific Northwest and um, our other communities of color. So wow. thank wow. you. Vice Chair Johnson, man, good words. Thank you for those words. Thank you for the outreach uh, the, and the insight. Uh, Soma, uh, how does your identity influence your activism? And who is some of your favorite activists that you follow on social media? Um, all right. I, <laughs> I want to first reflect on some of the things um, everyone else has said. I appreciate um, every person's vulnerability. It really means a lot to me. Um, and kind of touching on what Nate said about growing up uh, androgynous, I also did, but I also recognize how, for, like, society, the misogynistic society we live in doesn't accept, the, they are more likely to accept a female presenting person acting masculine, right, than they are to accept a male presenting person uh, acting feminine, I guess, at least that's my experience. So I feel like, you know, I, I'm privileged in the way that I am like white passing and when my hair is long, I'm straight passing. And I kind of have a lot of intersectional identities that I don't necessarily have ever had to suffer for. And I know how lucky I am for that, but because of those identities, um, that's what motivates me, you know, because I think of those people who are less fortunate than I, who don't have the space to be themselves, who don't have the same opportunities necessarily. Um, when I was 18, I ran for a delegate seat for the Democratic National Convention in um, North Carolina. and that's kind of how I came out to my mom. I was at dinner with her and I was like, oh, so when I go to the DNC, I'll be representing youth and I'll re be representing native people and I'll be representing uh, gay people. And she was like, what? <laughs> I was like, you know, um, and I just told her, well, I like, why do we have to come out? Why is that burden put on us as queer people to have to, tell people that we're different or whatever. Um, and so from that, that's kind of what spurred it. And I think, you know, I'm an artist too, like I'm a theater artist and I work in film and I like activism is not a line of work that I ever imagined or like had a strong desire to do, but I honestly just see no other choice than to, do the work as a person who has that privilege to speak up, um, as a person who, like I've gained a small social media platform mostly just because of my mom being elected. Um, but I think it's incredibly important to use any attention I'm getting for those things to like direct it towards folks who need to be put in the spotlight, you know? So, um, yeah, and my, my queerness is not always at like the forefront of my identity. I don't think that um, me being gay is the most interesting thing about me, but I feel empowered to celebrate that part of myself and like live out loud in a way so that, um, which, and I was inspired by Nate watching We're Here, it made me <laughs> cry a lot because that's so important, like seeing people just be their authentic selves on a, even if it's on a screen, out in person, wherever, like that is so important because we never know who's watching and who else we're empowering to do that work. Um, so yeah, my, <laughs> my identity, I think, gives me um, 
the gift of empathy as well to um, just reach out to those folks. And what was the other part of the question? Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, there is a lot of folks I follow on social media, but um, some accounts that I follow off the top of my head. I work for two, um, I work for two nonprofits called Seeding Sovereignty and Pueblo Action Alliance. Um, everyone should go follow them. <laughs> We're doing really awesome work and um, giving out some good information. Uh, other folks I follow, a lot of these, I don't know how to pronounce them like because I never have to say them out loud, but I'd be happy to type them up and post them as well. Um, Aaron Wise is a really good friend of mine. Um, they have taught me so much and their activism inspires me. I work with them um, over at Seeding Sovereignty, so uh, I suggest you follow them as well. And a few other pages, Decolonize Myself and Rise Indigenous. Um, I get a lot of good information from those folks as well. So yeah, I'm um, in a place where I'm also learning and trying to like decolonize my social media feed, so to speak. <laughs> so I too am on a journey of um, trying to find good folks to follow, but that's, that's a start. So. Wow, good, good. Well, I have, we'll have to look into them too. Maybe, we'll, maybe I'll have to start following, following them as well. Uh, thank you for your words. We do appreciate that. Nate, moving over here to you real quick. Obviously, um, COVID-19 has hit Diné country, uh, has hit Navajo Nation. Um, thoughts and prayers out to all of our relatives out there. Any other, any other place in America, in you know, Navajo Nation uh, per, uh, per capita here, uh, can you share with us the resiliency and the importance work that you've been doing in, in, and in what ways can we get involved uh, in, in supporting your, your line of work? I think you're on mute. Sorry, I can you hear me now. Okay. Good. All right. Well, being that the Navajo Nation is the largest reservation since, you know, the COVID-19, it's been very hard. I've been affected on both sides of my mom and my father's side of the family. I lost cousins to it. And, and how old were your cousins? Uh, I've had, I had a cousin who I, I used to be a janitor and before we're here happened, I quit my job because I just got tired of it. And my cousin who, her name is Chelsea. She's 30 years old. And that's young. Um, she, I used to visit her whenever I, would get scared and she was somebody I was really close to before her time and and I I just recently um went to my other cousin's funeral on my mom's side of the family um Tara who was uh I believe 49 and she was diagnosed with breast cancer and she's she was fighting it and it that hearing about that and doing work, putting myself, risking my life to, to help the community by, I, I thought to myself, every night it started to happen in the beginning, how am I going to help my communities around here? How am I going to be there for not just my family, but my extended family? I have developed close relationships with people that are among our community that are doing great things and I still want to be involved. I, 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 when We're Here came out, I launched my website finally and I started to sell my art, but I felt like that wasn't, that wasn't helping. So I reached out to some of the people that I've been doing work with, such as Arenda Tribe and Amy, she, um, you know, she took me in and she gave me these assignments to do a visual storytelling of all the four, the women, um, the forefront women on the Navajo Nation. And I would, you know, go to the, these um, places that they're doing work at, such as the Info Shop and, you know, the other places such as the um, distribution centers where they package food and then they send them out. I would gather these stories of the women and 
you know, right now my work is just all about helping um, the community by, by capturing these visual stories and hopefully doing something well the, the the plan is to 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 tell the story to get it out on the outlets to get more aid to come in because the president's not giving us anything um and right now there's sources that are actually donating we're we're, we're getting funding and we're getting ppe um you know when i'm here at this place and i'm doing like product photography right now i'm i'm I, I'm risking my life by driving across back to where I'm from to deliver PPE to my mother's hospital or my uncle's hospital in Fort Defiance on the way home. But I take extra precaution and I'm doing this not just for my family, for my cousins who would have wanted me to do this. I'm doing this for everybody. I, I'm, I'm, I, I want to make sure that everyone is safe, even if I have to risk my life. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Well, we're, we're praying for you. We're with you. Um, and to, um, and to, you know, to, 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 if you want to, you know, there, there's, there's a couple of places you can donate to. Okay. Um, you can donate to, let's see, sorry, I had this up. So, um, you know, how you can support the Navajo nation right now, you can donate directly to the Navajo and Hopi, um, families COVID relief fund. Okay. Uh, Arenda tribe COVID response. Um, uh, Denahoto Families COVID-19 Relief Fund, the, Na the Northern Navajo Relief Fund. Um, there, there's so many places. I mean, uh, I, I'll put a link up later on in on my Instagram on how you can help. And yeah, that that's 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 pretty much what I've been up to. I I get I'm so careful about how how I'm doing things and. I just want to let everyone know that watching out there that I'm, I'm trying, trying my best to, to, to help and to help myself and to take care of everybody. And th even if it's through a camera, yeah. it's, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so important doing it through camera. Cause Hey, let's, this, we're all here. You know, we got people watching from all around the, all across the United, the United States. We are going to uh, play our part in uh, you know, uh, Nate just shared it with us, the ways that we can contact, he'll be able to, Put that information up. Some somehow we'll get all the information up. So thank you for those words, Nate. Uh, Sharente, um, you're actually part of a Gen I, you know, and and I know that uh, you actually went out to D.C., went to the White House gathering. Uh, what was that experience like for you? Um, it was incredible. And thinking back, um, that was a, a few years back. Uh, mm -hmm. I was actually still. Uh, in the closet with my uh, tribal community. Um, and uh, I was invited to um, the first ever national uh, tribal youth gathering um, with the White House. And I got to meet Michelle Obama. Um, and I think looking back on that time, so much of what I'm doing now and have always wanted to do was was in a sort of catalyst form. Um, as I went there, hiding who I was, um, and then at that Unity conference, um, there was actually a panel um, for Two-Spirit people, and it was the first time they ever had that. Uh, a gathering and I was surrounded by true spirit people telling their stories um, and that kind of thing gave me the the power and the strength to be myself unabashedly in my own community um, and just uh, during this quarantine uh, my younger brother actually came out to our family um, and to the world. And uh, she, in many ways, um, has been an inspiration to me. Um, or even before he came out, he always was himself. And it's been said in this talk, like, 
he didn't need to come out um, because we knew who he was in his heart. And um, I am, I find solace in knowing that the horrific things that I've been through on the powwow circuit are not going to be things that he will need to be nearly as afraid of. Um, but it's something that we need to continue to keep fighting for to be seen. Um, I Meeting with these political figures, I mean, indigenous invisibility is the root of almost every issue we are facing right now because it is not visible in the media or anywhere. Um, as indigenous people, as a Narragansett person, we are not recognized in our own state, in our own town. Um, and because of that, our neighbors don't know how to treat, our teachers don't know how to treat the brown student with long hair in their class that's being bullied uh, when they try to go to the bathroom. Um, so I look back on that time um, with great fondness. Uh, and I think it really lights that fire moving forward. Still, despite all of the work that I and so many others have done and are doing, I know when I go to a powwow that I am going to be cussed at and nasty things will be said to me. Um, and that isn't okay. And by speaking out, I think that that is how we can really create change to, to allow people to know what is going on. Um, this, when I graduated from high school, I was a presidential scholar under the Trump administration. Um, and so I have a medal that has Donald Trump's signature on it. Um, oh no. So yes. <laughs> so as terrible as it can feel trying to work within colonial systems that are pitted against us. It is exactly those fights that we need to be fighting and we need to be having these conversations with um, our tribal governments, with our state governments, with our federal government. Um, and we need to not be silenced um, because the issues of one tribal community impact us all and as it's been said the issues of other minorities within our nation in our world um they all come right back to us right right wow good insight thank you for sharing that and you you are absolutely correct on how important it is to work together come together collaborate together and you know also understand sometimes we have to sit at tables that we don't want to sit at, but we have to sit at those tables to, uh, to, to have a presence. So uh, I, I feel like, uh, you know, you, you know, having Jen I in your life was, was really important, you know, and the opportunity to go out to the White House and be a part of that. So, man, I am just so thankful for you, uh, Sharente and uh, Tyson, uh, Salma and Nate. You know, you guys had a, this was a great panel. It was a a true honor for me to be able to moderate it. Uh, I just want to give a special thanks to the Center for Native American Youth uh, at the Aspen Institute. This is our fourth uh, uh, episode. We do appreciate you uh, for all being here with us. And my closing thoughts, I just want to say is, it is important to be you. Be who you are. Be proud of who you are. And, you know, you, you and, and always seek support. You'll find support. You know, sometimes when, when we're all trying to do something, uh, when we're trying to express who we are, there's going to be more people against you than there are going to be for you. It's up to you to focus on the ones that are for you. So, uh, you know, uh, thank you all. And, and just, you know, be praying for each and every one of you in your outreaches. 
uh, and anything that uh, anything that you put your mind to, I know that you'll get it done. Um, and just uh, our good insight, you know, and anybody out there listening, uh, these words that these uh, these young leaders shared, uh, whatever it may be, uh, whatever you you have going on, um, just know that we're with you, you know, and, and we're here with you. And we like to thank again as the for the center and for Aspen for you know. Uh, um, you know, letting the world know that, you know, every day is normal, you know, every, that we all live, you know, it, it's normal. It's normal to be who you are, you know. So thank you for that. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, don't forget in a couple of weeks, you can go over to Center for Native or uh, C-N-A-Y, uh, you know, get on their Facebook and uh, we're going to have another episode coming up and, uh, you know, just check back with us. I'm Chance Rush. It truly is an honor. And I want to thank all of our guests. You guys uh, have a great day. We'll see y'all down the road. Thank you so much for having me. Stay safe, everybody. Be careful, everybody. Take care. Take care.